All right, everybody. Tonight's lecture has to do with two laws that are not found in your textbook. So you need to be extra careful about writing down your notes and making sure you have them because you will not find any of this in your textbook or your outlines. Gay-Lussac's law involves pressure and temperature. Volume stays the same. So as you take a look here in this diagram, the piston is not changing in terms of its volume, although we're heating it up. And what people found, or what Gay-Lussac found, this was a, a French scientist, uh, he discovered that the pressure exerted by a gas is direct, directly related to the temperature in Kelvin. Um, this is where volume and the number of moles is constant. So imagine if we were able to heat that syringe of 10 milliliters of air and not allow it to change volume, the pressure inside would build because as you impose heat into the system, those molecules of gas are moving faster and faster. When they move faster, they collide more, and we know that collisions are what make pressure. So when we're talking about a direct relationship, we're talking... Um, about another straight line, okay? So this looks like this. As temperature changes and pressure changes, it's a direct relationship going upward, okay? And since this is a direct relationship, this is a proportional relationship, and we can use this proportion. Make sure you get this copied down as well, guys, okay? So just like last night, we're going to take a look at an example. Please take a moment and copy it down. Okay. As we read, we're going to create our list of uh, variables, just like we did yes in the other lecture, part one. So we have this sample of helium gas. It has a pressure of 121.6 kilopascals. And this is at a temperature of 22.5 degrees C. And as we continue reading, we can tell that we're going to have another temperature and another pressure, so I added the ones here. This asks us what Celsius temperature will the helium reach when it has a pressure of 202.6 kilopascals. And we don't know the second temperature. The first thing we need to do is convert this first temperature to Kelvin. So I just moved that. Hang on one second. Let's add our 273. And when we get that, we get 295.5 Kelvin. Okay? So we'll shrink this down so we have enough room. I guess that first pressure isn't part of it. Sorry about that. So just like last night, we are going to start with our equation P1 over T1 this time equals P2 over T2. And we realize that this is Gay-Lussac's law again because we're not talking about volume at all. This is involving pressure and temperature only. So now this becomes a plug and chug type of a problem. And we have 121.6 kilopascals over our 295.5 Kelvin. And that's equal to 202.6 kilopascals over T2. Now again, just like with Charles' law, this is a proportion, so we're going to cross, multiply, and divide. If your algebra skills are not strong enough, you're going to have to do the cross multiplication first and write it down. So I'm going to write the following in green again, just like last night, and this is the optional part, depending on where you're at algebraically. When we cross multiply going downward this way, we get a 121.6 kilopascal 
times T2. And then when we multiply going the other way, the 202.6 kilopascals times 295.5 Kelvin, we get a large number, 59,868.3, and that's uh, kPa times K for Kelvin. Solving for T2, we divide by 121.6 kilopascal. which cancels, and we are left with a temperature of 492.3 Kelvin, but this asks us for Celsius. So we simply subtract the 273 back out, and we get an answer of 219.3 degrees C. This next law that's also not in your book is called the combined gas law. The combined gas law is a very useful law for us. Students typically like this law because it combines the Boyle's law, Charles' law, and Gay-Lussac's law all into one equation so that you literally only need to learn one equation at this point. Please write it down as you see it. P1V1 over T1 is equal to P2V2 over T2. Now with Boyle's law, temperature is held constant. And when you have a variable on both sides of the equation that's equal, it cancels out. So if we end up canceling out our T's, we literally end up with Boyle's Law. If we look at Charles' Law from last night, with Charles' Law, pressure held constant. So that would mean that our P's would cancel out and we're left with V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2, which is Charles' Law, like we learned yesterday. If we keep volume constant, like we were just discussing with Gay-Lussac's Law, then we end up with P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, and we've got Gay-Lussac's Law. So as you can see, all three laws are found in the combined gas law. And so from now on, we can only, or we can use only this equation, and we can solve it to get all three of the other gas laws. The other convenience of this um, law is that it allows us to work with all three variables. So a problem may give us five uh, values out of six possible uh, values for a particular sample of gas, and that's what we're going to look at next. Okay, I'm going to shrink the problem down now that you have written it down, and let's take a look and read it together while we create our list of variables. Here we have a sample of gas that has a volume of 176 milliliters, so V is equal to 176 mils. It's at a pressure of 2.5 atm and a temperature of 25.4 degrees C. It, said, it asks us what the volume will be. Okay, so now we know that everything's changing, so we're going to put a 1 on everything. What will the volume be? That's the second volume. Uh, if the pressure increases to 4.5 atmospheres and the temperature increases to 35.3 degrees C. Now, of course, before we do anything else, we want to convert our temperature to Kelvin. So we're going to add 273 and we get 298.4 Kelvin. And add 273 here for our second temperature. And that will give us 308.3 Kelvin. And shrink that up. So clearly, this is a combined gas law because 
every variable is involved and everything is changing. So we have to write out the combined gas law. Let's see here, I'm going to slide that over and slide this up. Okay. So combined gas law is P1 V1 over T1, which is equal to P2 V2 over T2. And we're going to plug everything in. This is a proportion, so it's great. We know we're going to cross multiply and divide. Let's plug everything in. 2.5 atmospheres times 176 milliliters divided by 298.4 Kelvin is equal to 4.5 atmospheres times our second volume that we don't know divided by 308.3 Kelvin. So again, we have to cross multiply and divide, and once again, depending on your algebra skills, you can either go straight to the calculator once you have this written down. This is a minimum of what you have to have written down plus the answer. But if your algebra skills, are, you're still working on them, then we have to show the work. So in green is option again, is an option again based on your algebra skills. So when we cross multiply here, we get 2.5 atmospheres times 176 milliliters times 308.3 Kelvin, and that is equal to 135,652, but you have to include all of your units. So we're at atmospheres times milliliters times Kelvin. When we cross multiply the other way, we still have our V2, and 4.5 atmospheres times 298 Kelvin gives us um, 1,342.8 atmospheres times Kelvin. Now we have to divide by that. 1,342.8 atmospheres times Kelvin. 1,342.8. Atmospheres times Kelvin. Your atmospheres cancel. This whole thing cancels. And we get back to our answer here. V2, when all is said and done, the calculator answer is 101.0, but because of our pressure values, we can only keep two sig figs. So we're going to record it as 100 milliliters with a bar on that first zero that tells us that that zero is significant so we have technically two sig figs in our answer. Alright that's it for the night. Have a great evening.